Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday, and thank you for joining us for today's exciting augmented reality webinar. My name is Becca Briley. I am the marketing director here at TriStar. We are honored to have two PTC experts join us today to share their AR experience and knowledge with you. We have with us Adam Napolitano, who joins us as the senior director of PTC ThingWorks. His expertise resides in industrial Internet of Things and big data analytics solutions. We also have Matt Sheridan on the line. Um, he's another PTC leader with expertise in enterprise software sales, PLM, and product messaging. Uh, they're going to open up Q&A at the end of today's webinar, so if everyone can hold their questions till the end, that would be great. Um, this webinar is going to be recorded and published on our resource center at tristar.com, so if anyone misses it, um, you can definitely access the replay there within 24 hours. So I will go ahead and open up the floor to Adam and Matt, who are joining us today as our hosts. So thank you, Adam and Matt. Great. Thank you very much, Becca. Uh, this is Matt Sheridan. Uh, as uh, Becca said, I'm part of our uh, ThingWorks team at PTC, uh, working specifically on ThingWorks Studio, which is a big part of what we're going to discuss today. And uh, I'm located in our corporate offices in Massachusetts, and glad to be joining you. Adam? And good morning, Adam Napolitano. Uh, I head up our global ThingWorks channel sales organization, so working with our partners like TriStar, who we'd like to thank for hosting us today, and thank you for, for joining us. So we, we'd like to get started and talk to you a little bit about augmented reality. Excellent. So when we're talking about augmented reality, we're seeing a lot of interest out there and there's a lot of excitement. And what we want to do today is take you through why some of this excitement is, is uh, taking place and talk to you about how PTC really feels that augmented reality will be a part of the future and what it's going to mean when it comes to businesses that are producing products, so the industrial enterprise. And when we think about augmented reality, you're really talking about combining and bridging the digital and the physical worlds. And if you take a second and just look at our logo that we now have, the PTC logo, if you haven't checked it out recently, you can see the green and the black. That's a P and a D coming together. So we're really invested in bringing together the digital and physical worlds. Uh, in fact, our mission statement on the next slide even goes to uh, stating that our goal is to bring and deliver the value that comes with converging the digital and the physical worlds. Did you uh, go forward one slide, Adam? I'm looking. I still see the title slide. So when you get past the, uh, the digital and the physical uh, mission statement, what does that look like when you start talking about augmented reality? And we're showing you a quick video here. It's a little choppy, but it will get the point across. Uh, we were at a recent event, which was GE Minds and Machine. And in this case, you can see an engine block that we made a 3D printing of because the engine block was too large to bring into the event itself. But notice in this augmented reality experience, we're seeing digital uh, components that are augmented on top of the physical engine block that you see there. And that's a huge part of improving the understanding and the ability to work with that particular product. We're also seeing on the screen IoT information, so sensor readings and data that are coming from the engine being delivered as part of an augmented reality experience. And by combining the digital, the IoT information, and the, and the uh, 3D geometry in terms of uh, CAD models and representations with the physical, this engine block that you see there, we're now really improving the interaction of the person who has to work with that engine block. So the decisions they might need to make, in this case you can see blue and green uh, casings on the headers, that could tell them and indicate what needs servicing, what doesn't need servicing what is happening with this particular engine possibly in terms of efficiency. 
and we're really improving the decision making of the people who are going to be working with these physical products. That's a, that's a quick uh, movie example, but I think it paints the picture of what we're talking about. And the next slide goes into that, which is today we have the, the human who is working directly with physical products. And how do we bring into that physical world the digital information that's now going to become prevalent with all of the IoT connected devices that are happening out there in the world. And the human interaction could take place with just the digital side, or it could take place with just the physical side. But when you start bringing augmented reality into the mix, now you're able to put on top of these physical products the digital information that will really improve understanding, training, and ultimately the decisions that a person is doing with the, with the product. So this is a, a huge factor and um, you know a big part of what we see happening with that convergence of digital and physical. And, and one of the things that we're seeing with that is the challenge of everybody's talking about data and the growth of data. So if you look here, we're talking about data growing in terms of zettabytes, which is another interesting new uh, term. And, and we're seeing that basically doubling year over year. And so while things like analytics can help us bring down uh, or, or help manage that data a little bit better, the true value that we're seeing is combining IoT and analytics with augmented reality to help create that real visual processing. So that old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, really does have a lot of meaning. And so what we're doing is enabling uh, uh, folks to faster process information and make decisions again, combining that digital and that physical information. So one example of that is that we've, we've basically, to date, kind of been forced to either live in a physical or a digital world. So in, in this example here, we're looking at driving a car. That's very much a human physical experience that you look at. And then we have the ability to look at uh, things in a digital context, so looking at GPS, um, having censored information that may be coming into the car, but it's very much separate entities to date. Uh, what we're starting to see with, with the, the proliferation and, and the growth of, of augmented reality is a more converged view of that physical and digital world. So if you look now at the example on the left, we have uh, more contextual information about what it would mean to turn or to continue to go straight. The gauge cluster is a digital gauge cluster, so we're, we're able to have information presented in a more immersive manner, again, kind of converging those physical and those digital elements into a, a human converged experience. So that's really what augmented reality is, is enabling us to do. And so what we can do to, to align is look at our physical connectivity and digital platforms that help to, to create. So when we look at physical, that's hardware and software. So it could be a tennis racket, a car, a pump, a, an entire plant, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, using software and hardware to, to drive that. And then we get into, uh, with, with IoT, connectivity and communication. So IoT heavily relies on the ability to connect things via the internet and make decisions. And then from an AR perspective, it's driving that computer vision, which is the way we're, we're referring to that, to help us view and see and interact with that information. And then at the top, in the digital layer, we're looking at a bigger proliferation of applications and platforms using analytics and databases to help drive that information, to help drive decision making. And then we're using AR to help create those experiences, use again that platform and digital content and context to allow us to be more immersed in the experience and get a much fuller experience within what we're trying to do. So the way that that stack, that platform stack uh, measures out here when we look at it is needing to have these sets of capabilities in order to get to that future of understanding and that connected, converged human experience. And that includes being able to connect to the devices themselves, 
out on the edge, being able to analyze information. So it's one thing to say I have a temperature reading that comes up every 30 seconds or so, but when that temperature reading is uh, caused uh, or causing an anomaly, make sure that I'm aware of that. How do I notify people? How do I predict that an anomaly is coming? Being able to implement and build out the understanding of uh, what does this particular connected device represent. So if I have thousands of these devices, how do I maintain and, and manage those? How do I work and manage the pieces that are part of the connected device versus what's happening uh, back in, let's say, the, uh, the central location? So if I had like a software update, how do I make sure I get that update to thousands of connected devices? And then, you know, again, today the experience is really the bringing together of that information, the understanding of the connected devices, the device itself, the information that goes into it, like the geometry, the positioning, the uh, animations and sequences that happen there, all of that coming together in an experience. So the stack that Adam uh, just showed you, this is sort of if you kind of looked at the big picture of what are the key pieces of that stack and what you need to have, uh, we feel this is where we're going in the future. But let's, uh, again, we're, we're painting a, a little bit of a future picture because this is why we're seeing such uh, uh, excitement when it comes to AR, as I mentioned at the beginning. A lot of people are really interested in improving decisions, working with that physical product. But we're still at early days, and people are still working on just how is AR going to fit into their company. And what we're seeing is that there's some immediate areas that people are looking at right away uh, that can make an impact at bringing augmented reality in. So some of the big buckets, uh, the first one being market and sell. So today, if you could go into a customer and show examples of your product virtually using augmented reality, you could reduce the amount of a product that you need to have on hand, or maybe you have a product but you don't have all the options available, so you could virtual, virtually show options on that particular product. Uh, we're also seeing that uh, people are, you know, a, a simple way of uh, bringing in augmented reality is to put something on a brochure so that your customer can scan and then open up and see a virtual representation of your product. So it brings your product to life, it makes it easier for the customer to, to, uh, to review and uh, you know would in increase uh, sales and ultimately brand loyalty. In the create bucket, again bringing augmented reality into what is, is existing in the design world today, it's very straightforward. Uh, most of the industrial enterprise and especially our PTC customers who are out there have tons and tons of geometry and CAD data which is fantastic and how can we continue to leverage that and bring that forward even more well, as we're creating new versions or new iterations, being able to virtually understand those, share those with my design team, have everybody take a look at it. They can do a better design review with a, a three-dimensional review. You can bring it into prototypes. We have uh, people who are talking about using the design, putting it in the context of the physical product so I can see what the, pro the, the prototype would look like on the physical product, make my iterations, make my changes, improve my design, review it again on the physical product, go back and continue that review process. So it's making sure that the prototype has the highest quality, works with the physical product, but it also speeds that time. So again, those are, those are sort of simple, straightforward things that we can do with AR today and uh, e easily can uh, you know, be integrated into existing sort of design processes. When we look at operate, uh, this is a big aspect as well trying to reduce the uh, amount of time that it takes for someone to learn and understand how to work with the product. So this is a, a big aspect. We see a lot of people thinking about how their customers will work with the product or if it's a manufacturing environment, you know, how somebody, let's say, who has to operate the machinery that is being built by a, a company, how do they come up to speed faster, how do they make sure they're doing the right steps to be more efficient. Uh, this is a big area of, of uh, investigation. And then probably the biggest is service. So how can we immediately impact service where you have real-time work instructions that are being augmented on top of the product can reduce the amount of service time necessary and 
increases first-time fix rates, and maybe even can be delivered out to the customer themselves, and you have remote customer service that they can do and get keep their product up and running, thereby making sure that they're not losing downtime, and uh, that could reduce costs for them as well. So these are sort of big areas that with very little, uh, you know, we can use the technology that, as it exists today to, to make a big impact uh, without having to go very far from what exists already. Let's give you some examples of that. So if we go to the next slide, uh, here's a, a movie showing uh, an AR example around the engineering scenario. So obviously AR is very visual, so we want to show you some, some examples. Uh, in this case, this is a, a PTC partner who is uh, building a, a car, and they have the, the frame of the car, and they're using augmented reality to overlay possible body types. So again, this is a, a way of doing design reviews very quickly. They can try different body types. They can go back to the geometry in the CAD model, update that, bring it back here, see it again, and I'm starting to get a full life-size virtual understanding of these different options that go along with the with the car itself. So again, rapid prototyping, rapid understanding, rapid design reviews. Uh, as with uh, the information that goes along th with this, we're starting to expose that through augmented reality as well. So you're seeing there, okay, tell me a little bit more about this particular door. What's the requirements? What's the drawing that goes along with this? Again, all part of existing information that uh, would be part of this uh, geometry, and we're going to be able to expose that through our augmented reality solutions. The, uh, the next movie is one on uh, manufacturing. And this one uh, shows a person who's augmenting their training. So it gives you an idea of how can we make training better so that someone learns uh, faster, but in a way that is more realistic than, say, certainly reading a book, or in a way that's more cost efficient than having somebody have to use real products, real materials. So in this case, uh, the cylinder and the plate you see there are two pieces that are censored up and work with that uh, red wand to give the person who's training an augmented virtual training scenario around welding, and they can see how they're doing and what it would actually look like. So. Uh, much more rich training, better training, more efficient training, and again, uh, doing it in a way that doesn't cost as, uh, as much as it would if you had to use real products and, and real materials. Uh, the next slide is a service example. So this uh, particular movie shows a, a blood analyzer that is uh, built by a PTC customer, and their goal was to work on service for the blood analyzer. So in this case, there's a self-cleaning mechanism in the analyzer, but when that self-cleaning mechanism doesn't complete and it requires somebody to go in and do some manual steps, they built an augmented reality sequence that shows a person who maybe is not uh, a technician of the analyzer, but gives them the ability to do this customer remote service, you know, service their own machine. So in this case, the uh, augmented reality experience shows the person they must shut off the power. And that's the first step. And then the next steps in the process are to remove the cover of the casing. It indicates how this would happen. So giving, again, the uh, person the understanding, you must rotate this uh, screw, and then you must take this off, and you must remove this piece. And, uh, and then you can go in and, and complete the cleaning. So this is a much clearer, faster way to interpret information, as, as Adam's slide showed. You know, the ability to, to take in and interpret and understand data becomes much clearer, much more efficient when you have it in the context of that, that physical product. So it's that combination of digital and physical that's going to make these procedures and processes that much more efficient. So, uh, so three examples there, engineering, manufacturing, and service. Again, these are things that, uh, you know, we can start to immediately put out there into, uh, into the world. Uh, yeah, and so to, to kind of take that from the video example and, and kind of hammer home some of the, the great points Matt's making is uh, augmented reality really allows us to transform the workforce. And, and what do we mean by that? As we're seeing in manufacturing organizations and uh, other areas 
a an aging workforce that may be getting closer to retirement that brings a lot of this inherent knowledge. We're replacing those folks with millennials and younger uh, folks that are part of the YouTube generation. So they will go go to the video to look up how to do these procedures. So if we can use that and use the, the information we have available today, digitize that and create the experiences, we can do things like a next generation training tool, which we saw in the, in the example um, working on, on welding in, in a much safer environment. So this can be used in, in a school environment or in a job environment to help train uh, in a safer environment and speed up quality and time of that. So you don't necessarily need all the equipment. You don't need time with the equipment to be able to work on it in a training environment. So that would allow you to do that in a more intuitive way to get some seat time, to get some skills there uh, within digitized knowledge base. So you can actually use information that you have today that's coming from other systems, uh, data sources that you have in your organizations to, to be able to capture that information and move that information into uh, video capture or, or a, an immersive experience so that you can deliver this content remotely so it can be served up. It doesn't necessarily need to be tied into where you are. So you can move it from location to location. Uh, think about the service example. So that, in the example we showed, it was in a laboratory environment, but this could be field service technicians working on equipment far away from from a, a plant environment where they may just have tools on a truck and some parts that they can use to do the job. So we can digitize that knowledge and create that in a more uh, meaningful manner. And again, if we get back to bringing in younger folks into our organizations, this can have a recruiting appeal uh, because you're, you're showing uh, more progressive technology use, um, you're em engaging with the technology, giving that to a generation that has always lived with uh, with technology, be it smartphones, tablets, uh, those types of devices. So giving them that opportunity to work with that that content and with those types of applications and tools in the workforce and in the workplace gives you gives you a leg up in, in a recruiting potential. So let's take it down another level and talk about what PTC customers are saying about augmented reality in, in an industrial setting and, and where uh, where the interest really lies and where it may lie for you. Um, you'll see here we have a number of, of different use cases that, that people have identified. The top three being augmented work instructions, so what we showed in some of those videos, data visualization, so again the ability to, to look at information in a digital and the physical context converged. And then from a design and manufacturing perspective, looking at 3D workflow. So being able to walk through, uh, walk through those processes in, in more detail and with more contextual information. And so those are the top three with, with some significant interest uh, at or around 50% of the, the, the respondents. You'll see we also have some other examples around the remote expert. So you know uh, our version of phone a friend for the enterprise to, to uh, bring in a master technician or engineer, designer, what have you, depending on your use case, to be able to help uh, look at that. The digital twin, so we're, we're seeing um, a lot of uh, press about that, uh, where having information uh, both in a physical context and a digital context so that you can run that. One example of that, uh, Crossrail in the UK, they're actually building an entire digital twin for their whole setup for, for rail uh, and for the, the uh, passenger cars and for of the locomotives themselves, and then some others around supply chain logistics and, and some other use cases that folks are looking at. So all, all that being said, uh, this does not come without its challenges to, to do AR in the enterprise um, because there's time and skill. So there, there are augmented reality tools that are available where you can build up these experiences with different code bases, things like Unity. Uh, you know, you, you see that in in movies and in some training things that you may see, but that's that's time and skill intensive, and those may not be skill sets that you have within your organization. There's also uh, the massive amount of data. So go back to earlier in, in our talk, uh, talking about the the volumes of data that that devices create. 
Well, being able to leverage that is a key component, as, as we've seen in some of the videos that, that we've looked at. Having that ability to, to manage that data is important. Um, and then the, you know, one of the other challenges is reusing existing assets. Again, you have a lot of this digital content available in other mediums, whether it's in a PLM system or CAD system. Uh, there, there's information that's available. And then there's always the problem of finding the right app. So if anybody has ever been to an app store, whether it's Apple or Google or, or another, you know, finding the right app because there's usually more than one choice, but is it the right choice? So, so what, what have we found here is that PTC has taken the approach of ThingWorks Studio to help solve some of this. So ThingWorks Studio is a number of components to help bring together uh, that information. So we have within the studio piece itself the ability to create those experience and, and manage and deliver those. So you know, bring that out and, and put that out into the ecosystem. And then with ThingWorks View, that's the app that goes on the phone or the tablet uh, or ev eventually the wearables to consume the experience. So that's your end user view of that. And then we do that by using a thing mark, which helps us to identify and track to serialize that information so that we can present that information. So that's a, a, a pretty wide view of what we do and now what we'll do is kind of walk you through how we actually get there. So we create the information within Studio uh, by, by taking in that information from CAD, publish that information, build that experience out. We can animate it using Creo Illustrate. We then, <clears throat> excuse me, we then publish that up to the experience server tie it to a thing mark, and then that thing mark is out on the thing, is scanned by the phone or the tablet, and then you can pick your different experience so we can contextualize these. So for a maintenance technician, they may be looking at a different view than uh, a, an operator. So if we look at those different examples that, that Matt showed again, those, those folks may have a manufacturing view for the operator, a service technician view, a training view, and we can contextualize that for the different user groups within uh, within that experience setup. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, we've been talking about is again this this vision, the physical and digital vision. And uh, you might be saying, "Hey, this sounds like a really great thing to to aspire to." But you know, how complicated is it to start get moving and get going on this? And this is what we're showing in this video, that we're trying to take the complexity out of building augmented reality and converging the digital and physical. So this video, it, we're actually building an AR experience in under one minute. And the way we're able to do that is we're going to leverage existing 3D CAD geometry that uh, we already have, which again, I'm, I'm guessing many of the folks on the phone already have tons of design examples. Uh, by bringing it into Studio and then publishing. So this is Studio, and we try to make it, again, a uh, non-coding environment. So there's a widget for holding a model that we drag over. We upload the geometry file that appears in our canvas. We're going to define a mark, which, as Adam mentioned, that's how we can identify this particular experience. It goes with this particular product. We'll give it a title. We'll give it the uh, mark number so we know the specific mark. And then uh, we'll publish. And you can see in the lower right we have our, our counter. Uh, you know, this is probably uh, maybe sped up a hair, but it's pretty, pretty damn close to, to being under a minute. Once it's published, we get our mark. You uh, print that out, and then we scan it with the app that's on our mobile device. And there you go. We have uh, augmented reality of this particular coffee maker and uh, done in under a minute. So, you know, we've been talking about some higher level aspirations and, and where we're going, but to get started and start leveraging the material that you already have, it really can be done very, very quickly. Uh, and that video uh, is an example. If we want to start building on that, what does Studio also do that's very interesting and, and what does PTC bring to the table? Well, we ha have a rich history in working with uh, CAD models. And in this case, we're using uh, our 
tool Creo Illustrate, which is essentially giving us a, a simple way to create sequences. Uh, so I don't have to be an expert in how this particular product works or an expert in geometry to go forth and create a step-by-step -step example of taking something apart, which is what we're doing here. And this would be part of how we would communicate to our service person or the customer. And once we've defined that step-by-step -step sequence, back here in my studio environment where I'm building the AR experience, I'm just going to load in that step-by-step -step instruction, which is uh, simple to do. I brought it in as a resource. I then define the sequence that we want to play in the, in the property pane on the right. And then also part of building this AR experience, one of the things we know is there's going to be the 3D components, but there's 2D parts of it as well, the interaction that the person will have. So how do I, as the user of this AR experience, play the experience. Well, I'm going to put together a, a play button on the 2D environment, which is you can think of it as the, the pane of the mobile device, like the, the screen of the mobile device. And uh, if we go to the next movie, you can see what this would look like when we bring together now our AR experience the, with the physical product. So this is a, a generator, a portable mobile generator. And when we scan the mark, it showed us several experiences that we could choose from. We're going to select the one that disassembles this air filter. On the screen, you can see the play button that we have. And notice the air filter, and notice that it is in context of the physical product. So it looks like it's in the right spot. It's not just hanging out in front of the generator. It's actually located properly within my perspective of the generator. and then. As we hit play, you can see the sequence run, and it shows me exactly what I need to do in order to service this. So again, very straightforward, very quick, using uh, existing geometry that we had, the CAD models that we had, and building a sequence using uh, you know, our Creo Illustrate tool very quickly, and then combining those and building an experience. If we go to the next uh, movie, the, the other part that we've talked about a lot here is so how do I improve not only my understanding of what's happening there, but maybe my decisions around the physical product? How can I bring in uh, readings and sensor data as more and more things become connected and start bringing uh, connected information and uh, streaming data off of the physical product? Well, here in studio, we can define things like sensors, and we're putting on a couple of gauges and then what we're going to do with those gauges is we're going to tie them to sensor data information that's coming through the ThingWorks IoT platform. And in this case, this uh, particular generator is uh, delivering streaming information. Uh, they do that through uh, cellular. And I can have my gauges to show me that those readings that are coming from the, uh, from the IoT sensors on this uh, particular uh, product. So as we're setting this up, what you notice is that we're setting this up as one experience. One of the things we talked about was scale. If I had thousands of these products, in this case this generator, I don't need to build thousands of experiences, one for each generator. We're building one experience that then would apply to all the generators that are out there. So this is the way that we can scale very quickly in an environment where I have different products and different product lines. You know, how do I determine, let's say, the, the reading off of one uh, car, if there's another car with the same make, model, and color right next to it? Well, this is where it gets a little uh, challenging for, for some approaches. If we go to the next movie, we can see the result, which is when we scan the, the thing mark, the mark on the product, that's the identifier that is telling us which particular generator we are looking at. And the experience runs and delivers us the values that are coming from the sensors for that generator. So you can see in this case we have a battery and uh, we have the fuel level for that generator. So this is very important because uh, if we go back to our opening slides and we talked about bringing together, let's say, the, the physical of the driving with the digital of the GPS and trying to bring those into one human convergence. 
uh, we want to do this in a way where we're, we're delivering the information that is uh, relevant to the person in the context that they're working on. So we need to know the information for this particular product and how, uh, you know, what the readings are related to that particular product. So working with the geometry, being able to create sequences, being able to bring in sensor data and readings, I mean, these are areas that uh, ThingWorks Studio are really, we're, we're working to uh, continue to make these things uh, part of uh, everyday thought process when you're working with products. And then this last movie, uh, one of the things that uh, many folks out there working with augmented reality are asking for is the ability to have more wearables. So make it possible that somebody who is a technician or in the factory floor is able to just walk around. Uh, HoloLens is a very popular choice these days. So uh, this is uh, the same experiences just running through HoloLens. We will deliver a HoloLens version of our uh, ThingWorks view in June. Uh, we're excited to do that. It means that we can use Studio to build out these experiences in the rapid way we just showed you, and then just make them available through HoloLens uh, using the HoloLens technology. So. And so to kind of start to, to wrap up here, we just want to talk a little bit about, well, who's using this today? And you can see that we have over 1,500 companies I think that number grows on a daily basis that have participated in our free uh, trial or pilot program. And if you're interested, you can absolutely sign up for that. If you go to the, the website here on the bottom left, studio.thingworks.com, there's a pretty simple sign up. And that'll give you uh, three months free access to, to the solution where you can go in and, and build your experiences and go ahead and test this out. Um, if you've already been in the the augmented reality pilot program, you know, please talk to your your representative at TriStar to, to look at other options for how we can move forward in, in that in that case. But a number of uh, our partners and customers have been participating in and really publishing a lot of experiences and, and using this uh, to really drive that together. And then so before we open up to to questions, I just want to again kind of reiterate that if you look at what PTC is doing, we are truly unlocking the converged value of the physical and the digital worlds. And we're doing that by not only looking at IoT, but also relying on PTC solutions like Creo and Windchill to be a huge part of that convergence of the physical and digital. So it is really an investment in, in what PTC has done for the last 30 years while looking at the future and bringing in new technologies to the, the portfolio to help drive that next that next wave of innovation within uh, within the environment. And so, with that, uh, we want to say thank you to to TriStar for for hosting us, and thank you to to all of you for attending. And we can go ahead and start to uh, field some questions. So a question that we have is, when you scan a thing mark, does it reference a local drive or is it web-based? And the, the question is in context of uh, requiring processing speed and internet connectivity. So when you scan the thing mark, it is reaching to, we have a, a global domain index which is very basic information that tells us what mark this is and what service is it's registered against. And the service, is, each company would have their own service set up, uh, and that's where the information of the experience lives. And once we've identified which service it is, uh, goes with this particular mark, then it would the service would be called and it would download the experience. So uh, the way that we're approaching this is the experience is downloaded when you scan and select on the experience. And that opens up challenges to AR today. And we're addressing those by really focusing in on things like optimization of the data, making sure that we're absolutely driving down the data size as much as possible or during the design of the experience. Uh, you know, you don't need to see 
all the components of a product if you have the physical product right in front of you. If you're trying to show a step-by-step -step procedure, let's bring the components and work with the components that are part of the procedure rather than deliver all the components. Uh, and again, we can do that because we're, we're talking about having the physical product in front of us. So um, I think there was two parts to that question. Part one was, yes, it is making web call up to a uh, hosted environment. And then part B is, it is delivering the information down as part of the experience. I'll add, a, I'll add a third part, which is we are working on an all on-premise version for folks who are in, let's say, uh, you know, have high security needs. And uh, that is something we're working on that will be coming in June of this year as well. Great. Thanks, Matt. The, the next question uh, that, that came in is, must the thing mark stay in the field of view of the tablet wearable to view the AR content? Our work pieces are very large, and this might be difficult for implementing work instructions. Yep. So that is uh, something we've heard as well. So right now, when you scan a mark, uh, the AR technology that we're using, uh, which is the, the world's leading AR technology, which comes from, again, a PTC technology called Vuforia, that starts to do <coughs> Excuse me. That starts to do extended tracking. So, how does it start to pick up the areas around the mark and normals and other edges, so that you can move around and start to and still see some items? I mean, there is limitation to that. So, uh, you know, it's not like you can, let's say, walk away completely, but you certainly can do some movement and not uh, not disrupt what you see. For a case like a machine where you need to maybe walk 360 around it. Uh, we can include more than one mark, so it would pick up now the new location relative uh, to where you're standing as you then move to, let's say, another side or the back. So uh, we are seeing those use cases, and we're definitely uh, working on, on ways of, uh, of uh, being able to implement those. Great. Next question is, in the one-minute example you shared, what software do I need, or can I work with a company to achieve the end result? So the, the software we showed there is ThingWorks Studio. And um, you can make uh, the studio, again, is uh, the quick way to make the AR experiences. And you could make them yourself using, again, geometry that you might have. Um, there is uh, a request that we've had from, from customers to say, well, I just want to outsource the whole building of the product. And in that case, we have uh, a lot of partners today who, uh, who could take on some of that activity. Uh, you know, and that might be a good thing. Again, talk with TriStar. Uh, there might be an opportunity to, to do something like that there. Absolutely. OK, a couple more that have, that have come in. Um, for creating the experience, is it required to have both ThingWorks Composer and ThingWorks Studio? No, you can create a whole experience in uh, ThingWorks Studio. Right, and, and to add on to that, if you wanted to uh, embed more IoT data, that's where the, the uh, opportunity to potentially leverage uh, the ThingWorks platform could come into place. But you can, you can certainly tie in data um, with just Studio. That's correct. Yep. And then the last question we've got so far is, uh, can we show a small bill of material structure with part and drawing on on the experience while showing the Creo Illustrate model? Yeah, so we are, uh, one of the great things, again, is with our history and our understanding, we understand the, the components, the component name, the structure, and those type of things. In the early versions of Studio, we have not exposed all of those in the AR experience. Uh, we have had some, some folks uh, build some customizations, and we're working to add that type of capability. Uh, and by that capability, I mean you know seeing a component list and a structure on the side of the experience, and if I select upon something, it highlights what I see in the augmented reality world. Those are very popular requests, and, and uh, we're doing those back in the lab today, and we're going to continue to uh, rapidly add more capability into the product. Uh, which we release uh, a new build every four weeks, uh, continuing to build a new capability. Great. 
Well, those are all the questions we, we have at, at this point. Uh, I'm just scanning to see uh, if anything else has come in. And it, uh, it looks like we have addressed those questions. So again, I want to thank everyone for attending. And I want to thank uh, TriStar for, for giving Matt and I the opportunity to talk to you about augmented reality and our ThingWorks Studio offering. Thanks so much, yes, and have a you. great day. Thank you. Thank you, Adam and Matt, for joining us. And if you guys have any further questions um, about today's webinar, you can email us at info at tristar.com, and one of our reps will get to you um, as soon as possible. So thank you, guys, and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks a lot. Take care.